I'm just going to take over for the last few minutes and talk a little bit about what um, Elixir has, has meant for me as a someone who's got a leadership role in advocating for data management, and particularly fair data um, within my research institute. So I, I'm the head of research data and systems at Botham Tech Research. And I lead a small team of data stewards and research software engineers. And with, we're there primarily to support our three national bioscience research infrastructures. So these are the Roth and Settle Long-Term Experiments, the Northwood Farm Platform, which is a highly sensitive um, farm, um, dairy farm, and the Roth and Settle Insects. We also support our strategic programs, and we have some good collaboration there with the um, UKCH as well. Uh, but really, a lot of what we're doing is leading adoption for FAIR principles. And so what does, does Elixir Data Stewardship offer, offer me? To do that well first of all it gives me access to a much bigger community uh, so Rothamsted is part of the uk elixir community but not many people at Rothamsted would necessarily know about as gabby says it gives you access to that peer group so you can bounce ideas off of each other you've got access to new training resources and all of these other facilities as well and that's that's a really great help for both making sure that you have validation in the kind of work that you're doing so you're not going off on the tangent but you are towing the line, so to speak, with what the community is doing. And it also gives me exposure and a profile, both within the wider community, but also within my own institute. And that, that's very important for giving me then agency within my institute to, to really start leading um, and advocating for this cultural change, which a lot of fair adoption is about. And that that's really is quite crucially important because it, for a lot of our research scientists, it's still quite a new thing. And that's just a, a picture of the all hands um, that we have in Dublin that uh, Gavin mentioned. So one of the projects that I've been involved in as a data steward um, in the Elixir Data Stewardship Programme is developing some exemplar data management plans. So this is using the Data Stewardship Wizard, uh, which I think as well is, is being adopted by some of the NERC centres. Uh, there's a great poster out there about it um, and again this, this is very important because a lot of our researchers you know, they have to write data management plans but they're not very good at it you know they put, a, put buzzwords in like fair but then when you read through they're not doing fair so it's a lot of this is about upskilling our researchers to to really understand what they're they're signing themselves up to when they say that they're going to do fair data management in their data management plan but part of then that is developing the processes to make sure that we can properly resource that. Um, so one of the things that we've, we've done as part of this is put together some new processes at the ground right stage so that we can really catch the full digital footprint of what some of our projects are going to entail. So that includes not just the research data management, but also the software engineering and the, the data infrastructure capacity for that as well. So if you're talking um, a lot about some of the, our big phenotyping projects or some of the digital twin work that we're doing. These have a really big digital footprint in terms of both storage and computation capacity. We need to understand whether or not we can cope with that. Um, it also feeds into then to the, the post-award uh, data management planning. So most of our work is funded by BBSRC. And BBSRC have a very different approach to data management compared to NERC. So if, if you've ever written a NERC uh, data management plan, you'll know that the meat of that really comes once you get the award. In BBSRC, it's the other way around, and there isn't the same kind of follow-up. Now, I think the NERC have got it the right way around, and so what we're doing is implementing some of the NERC practices for data management within our BBSRC-funded projects so that we really have that end-to-end -end data management life cycle. <clears throat> and and then another piece of work that I've been involved in um, <clears throat> is around training. So last year we won an award from BBSRC uh, to do a, a collaborative training um, as a capacity development piece of work with uh, CIMID, uh, one of the CGIR institutes, so that's an agricultural research institute across uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And what Elixir has allowed me to do, and some of the access to training I've had there, is to take the, the training materials we developed for that workshop and convert that into a data carpentry course. 
um, which is, I think, is a really powerful way of then getting the, the best use out of that funding. So we've now got, rather than a bunch of PowerPoint slides, a reusable, fair piece of training around long-term experiments that we can then provide uh, and collaborate on with the wider research community. So that's just a quick oversight of, of what I've been doing and also what Gabby's been doing. Um, and just to acknowledge the, the wider Elixir uh, team on the, on the data management. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella and Richard. Um, I don't know if there's a joke in it or, or what, but wizards and fellowships, there's something going on. Um, I've got a question because I was involved in the BGS data management planning system many moons ago. Um, so as regards to the wizard, I presume institutions would, if they wanted to deploy it, install it locally, at their own instance. So they manage their own records. It's not all going into one big pot. I would need to check that. I, so we're using the cloud version for sure. I, I'm not sure if you can, um, I don't know if some of the, the CH people are using it would know if you can deploy your own version, but it, we're, we're using the cloud version and it allows you to template um, data management plans to your particular funder. Um, mm -hmm. So we've, we've done one for BBSRC, uh, which is quite a lengthy data management plan. Um, it provides good guidance uh, to go through for the kind of questions that, or responses that you should be providing for, for different uh, questions. So whether it's types of data that you're producing and what the destination for those should be, the standards you should be using, um, it it guides you through that. So it's it's kind of a an evolution of what was DMP online, uh, which I think is still still going. But it's a it's a good resource. Yes, sure. So yeah, and then there's going to be a no EDS instance right of the data stewardship visit. Uh, yeah, which will be shared between the NERC data centers. Okay, well, it sounds like it's it's already sort of been planned and, and it, yeah, it's being yeah. quite tested at the moment. Uh, it's probably also as well. assume you can bulk load historical EMPs, or maybe that's a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's one of the problems we have is migrating from one system to another is yeah. what do you do with the historical records that are still largely active a lot of them. Yeah, it's, it, it has been designed to be a much more interoperable system. Um, so I know the group at Oxford who are responsible for fair sharing, one of the, the activities that they're starting to look at now is, is how you've got some annotation to your data management plan um, mm -hmm. and recommendations based on fair sharing records for the type of repositories and data standards we should be using for different types of data. So it's making it a more sophisticated system as well. Brilliant. I don't have any other questions unless there's a quick one in the room. Um, otherwise, thank you very much.